Theresa May has made much of her desire to crack down on irresponsible big business, but this may not go down well with some of her financial backers. Let's take a look at a few of her pre-election donors. Sir Mick Davis, former owner of a mining conglomerate, gave her £30,000. Abel Halpern, a senior partner of a US private equity firm, gave her £30,000. Ian Taylor, CEO of oil dealer Vitol, which is a company previously found guilty of grand larceny in the Iraq Oil for Food program, a 2001 article in The Observer stated that in 1995, Vitol had secretly paid one million US dollars to Serbian war criminal Arkan to settle a deal with a Serbian oil company, Arrive. Vitol has denied all charges, arguing that no government agency has ever prosecuted the company in this respect. In 2007, Vitol pleaded guilty to grand larceny in a New York court for paying surcharges to Iraq's national oil company during Saddam's regime and circumventing the UN Oil for Food program, Vitol subsequently paid $17.5 million in restoration for its actions. According to an article in the Financial Times, Vitol was the company to organise the first controversial sale of Libyan rebel oil to Tesoro Corporation in early April 2011. According to the Financial Times, the company was approached by the Qatari National Oil Company to sell a cargo of crude oil supplied by the Libyans in exchange for technological supplies and fuel for the National Transportation Council of Libya. In September 2012, an article in Reuters alleged that the company had bought and sold Iranian fuel oil by bypassing an EU embargo against Tehran. Vitol bought 2 million barrels using a ship-to-ship -ship transfer off the coast of Malaysia from a national Iranian tanker company vessel and sold it to Chinese trade. The article stated that as Vitol is based in Switzerland, which is not implementing Western sanctions, Vitol had skirted the charges. In 2013, the Telegraph alleged that the company had been using for over a decade an employee benefits trust, avoiding paying income tax for its UK staff. Ian Taylor, former CEO of the OID of Vito, gave Theresa May's campaign £15,000. Michael Lewis, African retail tycoon whose family wealth is managed in the tax haven of Jersey, gave £5,000. So, we can see from this that Theresa May takes money from tax dodgers, environmentally destructive industries and big oil, as well as mining interests, some of the most irresponsible businesses on the planet. Tax dodgers who don't pay their tax are like vampires on this country, taking all the benefits and making money from the working class labour while moving profits offshore to services while services like the NHS suffer. These are massive hoarders. There's something mentally wrong with them. Why do they need so much money? So they're richer than everyone else. Do they really need to hoard 99% of the wealth? And it's not like they've earned 99% of the wealth because they have to hire people to do work. But we should all know the reason they give money to politicians is so that they can call in favours in the future by goodwill, so they can influence lawmaking in Parliament. Obviously, having the Prime Minister in your debt can be quite a useful business tool. So who do you think she's going to get her marching orders from? The business, her business donors, or from the man in the street? I think more than likely it's going to be the business donors. So we need to really highlight this to people whenever we can. If they say she's doing a good job, let them know she's taking this money and who she's taking it from. And why don't you look at who's backing your local MP? See if that's affecting their decisions in any way. Have they made some decisions you think are against people's interests? Perhaps that will reveal why they did it.